Hey everyone, this is Alice from scraphappy.org and we are here for Scrapbook Live. I'm so excited because it's time to come together and scrapbook together and I'm excited because I actually haven't been doing very much scrapbooking lately, although I have been finding a lot of comfort in doing card making. And I will confess, like I have said this, and if you know me, you're probably like, Alice is doing a lot of card making. This is a little strange because I'm often the person that says, well, I don't really make cards. Well, I make cards, but I don't really like making cards. <laughs> so it's like this complicated relationship with card making. And I find myself doing a lot of it these days because uh, maybe it's because I have some new toys to play with, let's confess, uh, that could be part of it, but also because um, I, I just want to send out love into the world, so I've been making a few extra cards so I can send some, and let's here, let's put this up here, um, and Diane says, I love making cards, <laughs> well, I, I, um, I'm finding my love in cards and I've been having lots of fun playing with card making. And so that's been really good. Um, Tracy says card making, that's the quick payback. Unfortunately, I've had to make some sympathy cards. I needed a few of those recently and um, some fun birthday cards. So I have done some really fun cards and um, I'm excited that I'm kind of in the part I'm almost done making this one here. I was working on it last night, but look how cute this is. It's got a little bit bendy in the layers and I'm not happy about that. So I don't know, we might, uh, but yeah, it has like glitter. I, added, I don't know if you can see the glitter, but I added glitter in the background. I kind of masked off the edges and then used the, um, yeah, it's got like too bendy in it. Uh, let's see, I used the Glitz glitter gel from Gina K. And yeah, it really was that much. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> put it under a heavy book if you need it. <laughs> I have a couple. So yeah, it kind of warped in the layers of the glue. So the paper got a little damp from the glitz glitter gel. And then when I, and I thought it was dry enough when I glued the top layer on, cause I wanted it to really stick on top of the glitter. Cause what do you do? Um, yeah, so I'm not sure. It's, it's not perfect, let's just say. Maybe I'll uh, fake the not perfect by making it a little extra distressed. <laughs> Sometimes that's what you do, right? It's like, oh, suddenly this is, just, is a distressed project. <laughs> but I think, um, yeah, it's so cute. Um, the, I used a, a cutting uh, die from Lawn Fawn. And this one is called um, Polka Heart Backdrop. So it's the Polka Heart Backdrop and it cuts out all of the little tiny hearts. And just in case they don't pop out of the thing, there is a tiny little hole on the back so you can pop them all out. Most of them came out <laughs> without me having to work at them. So that was nice. But yeah, so I just thought that was super cute because you could have like little dots or you could have cute little hearts and that was adorable. And they're kind of two different sizes. So if you want to see on the card, that's kind of cool that they're a couple of different sizes. And it's made to fit like a, um, a quarter fold card. So like four and a quarter by five and a half. But I did trim the edges down because there was kind of nice lines where you could trim it down. So I liked that they kept everything really lined up and not all interspersed as much as it looks like it is so that you can trim the edges so that I could actually leave that red border around this card. So I thought that was really great too. Okay. But that's like a little off topic. <laughs> a little. When Elle says, I do too. I make birthday and anniversary cards for everyone on both sides of our families and some close friends every month. Plus all my Christmas cards every year. For 2019, I made 95 birthday and anniversary cards and 115 Christmas cards. It is so much fun to design and make. Yay. So, um, Danielle says she can't get the sound to turn on forget what to hit. Is it like for, um, hmm, the volume? Is anybody else having issues with the volume? Um, usually that works. Um, so I'm going to tell her to try popping out and coming back in. 
Um, if you unmute it, your picture, it just unmutes you for talking. Um, it doesn't actually um, change hearing me. Um, two, six. I can hear somebody right now, but it's just like little random noises. And what happens in our replay is that we have the screens popping back and forth. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So and come back in because you should hear it automatically. Uh, Christine says, hi everyone, I got my coffee, but the internet is bad today, so I'm in the kitchen and not my scrapbook room. Oh, girl, I understand the, <laughs> that problems with, with that. Uh, I've, I've had to do these like scrapbook lives a couple times from different places, like not thankfully for quite some time. We finally got a better setup here. But yeah, it's been crazy from time to time. So, okay, got it. Thank you. Perfect. Yay. Okay, so I am using a kit from the Wild Hair Kits and so excited to get my kit. It's my March kit. Here it is, the Wild Hair Kits. If you haven't used one of their kits, they're custom curated. So you kind of fill out a style profile and then you get to... Um, kind of get like a goodie bag of surprises that you don't know exactly what you're going to get, but it's like super fun. So what do I have in here and on my invoice here? So this is the deluxe kit and the deluxe kit is $38.95 US dollars. And so it says, hope you love your March kit. We selected lots of new products from Pebbles Hey Hello collection and made sure to send lots of pink, yellow, and teal. That was my request because I love using those colors. And we included some of your favorites, die cuts, enamel dots, alphas, and stickers, as well as our March exclusive cut file. Enjoy! Uh, Brielle says, I'm not a baker and today I'm making cinnamon rolls. They are finally rising, so I'm getting closer. Then I'm gonna scrapbook. It's all about happy this Saturday. Work is hard, so the break is needed. Oh my goodness, I totally get it. Uh, Suzanne, your camera is not on, which is totally fine. <laughs> which is totally fine. Unless you want to especially turn it on during the show and tell part, it's totally fine. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to show you what's in my kit. Um, yeah, of course, actually, I will have a little announcement. Judy says, Hey everyone. Thanks Alice for keeping a semblance of normalcy with continue with your live, of course. And I have a little announcement of things to come in April. So <laughs> I said I was going to do something for April and I'm like, I'm too, I, I had like a few different ideas, but we finally narrowed it down and I'm so excited about it. <laughs> Heather says, I don't want to cause a panic, but I'm going to scrapbook today. <laughs> She's always working on homework or grading papers or doing other stuff. So uh, here's my little postcard. It says, hi, Alice, happy creating from Allison. And I'll show you what's in my kit. Already, I'm so excited. Um, so from Bramble Fox, there are some acrylic pieces. And these ones have words that say, today, super imagine, smile, adore, and create. And they have like little arrows that point down. So you can put those like at the top of whatever you're writing or at the top of a photo or, oh, I'm already in love with those. And then uh, these letters are possibly the cutest things ever. Missy says, I love those. Me too. These are from Pink Paisley and they're called Again and Again. Look how cute. They're like, look, they're foamy, so they'll stick, right? Because that foam adhesive actually sticks to things. Um, but they have like that little overlay on the top of the foam to make the um, design. And so they're actually like a wood grain. Can you see the, their wood grain on there? <gasps> they're so so sweet and like you can see how teeny tiny they are but like they're not like impossible to deal with especially okay so here's the thing if you have I love that size says Marty <laughs> me too <laughs> um so when you have stickers like just a flat sticker that is this size kind of a nightmare to work with because there's nothing to really hold on to right like and so some people are experts with tweezers 
I'm not one of those people. I'm sorry, but I struggle with like teeny tiny little stickers. But these having a little bit of that texture because they're puffy, right? You actually have something that you can kind of hold on to when you're lining them up. So these are a big win for me. Uh, Jen Hadfield's collection. Um, super cute. They're from her Hey Hello collection. So it's all these little pieces, all these little embellishments. And like you can just see there's 10 pieces with foil and 30 cardstock pieces. And look at the cute little icons in there. So adorable. There is a hedgehog, there is a flamingo, there is like so many cute things. I'm thinking we're still in the month of Calvin Ball right now. So my layout today hopefully will put me over my 100 point goal. That was my goal. And I'm not kidding when I say there are people, there is a person, I shouldn't say people, there is one person that has over 5,000 points in Calvin Ball. I don't even know. Like, like, I didn't even think that was possible, but we have people like several that are now over two and 3,000 points. I'm like, these people are massively creating, like super productive. There's a cute little sloth. There's some like flowers. Those are super fun. There's like a little bathtub in here and a bicycle. So like if you need to have like um, something for like relaxing and hanging out and just chilling at home, there is a bathtub, there is a sloth, there is a cup of coffee, there is, there is all these cute little things that would be perfect. And then there's like donuts and cupcakes and um, macarons and <laughs> like all the fun things. So. Um, so also from that same collection, I have the stickers from those so you can see more of the, the fun little icons. Look at the cute little sloth just chilling with his cup of coffee or tea. Teresa says, I use tweezers for almost everything. Like maybe I need a lesson in how to properly use tweezers because I find them a struggle. Actually, the only ones that I actually enjoy using are the kind of like reverse tweezers. You know what I mean when I say that? Where you squeeze them and they open rather than squeeze them to close because you, when they're, they're naturally closed and then um, then you can like, you know, dip something in your embossing powder and hold it with their heat gun, right? Or something like that. She says, I use the reverse ones only. <laughs> Is there like a special name or <laughs> am I just like making that up? Christine says, I love the little hedgehog. That's my grandson's nickname. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. And yeah, so some super cute. There's two sides. So nice stickers from Jen Hadfield. There's lots of lum yummy papers here, but before we get to those, check out these enamel dots. Okay, so you can see that most of them are like regular enamel dots, but you see how these ones are like shiny? Eee, they're so pretty. Yeah, so that's kind of fun. And now the papers. So there's some paper from that Jen Hadfield. Oh, this is a different collection. This is from her This Is Family collection, actually. And look at the little speech bubbles. They say things like, what did you learn today? What is your favorite food? Let's eat. Remember when? What is the most interesting thing that you learned? So teachery people, <laughs> Jacqueline, <laughs> or people that are all of a sudden discovering the joy of teaching your kids at home right now, this might be what you need. <laughs> This is family. And if you're actually making or requesting a kit from the wild hair kits, you can always say, Ooh, Alice had this really cool paper called this. And you could always like request that. Just saying. Um, yeah. So with a speech bubble paper from Jen Hadfield, this is family collection and look on the back. So dice, it is all full of dice. Anybody playing some board games lately? I've played some. Oh yeah. That's like so perfect. Um, this paper, okay, I'm going to pull the ones that are from that same collection. Oh, actually, they're not the same collection. They're a different collection, but my gosh, like what a perfect thing. So Jen Hadfield's Hey Hello collection. So you can see the return of the little characters and stuff. And it's like lovely cut apart. And then the back has like, um, like word search kind of thing. Like how fun. Have you, have you ever seen like a word search kind of paper before? Because I haven't seen one before, but it has like words hidden in it. Like, thanks. Thank you. Um, 
<laughs> I don't know. Maybe I can't see them as good as I was hoping to. I can definitely see thanks and thank you on here a lot. Um, let's see. Kelly said, I have I have to use, because I'm a, mis oh, she has to use, sorry, use um, iPads are fun for typing. They're always spelled correct and you use the wrong things. I know. I hope yours is like mine. <laughs> um, how to use tweezers because I'm a massage therapist with no long fingernails. I use the reverse tweezers too. See, I think having long fingernails is a detriment to picking things up, actually. I don't know. Um, Teresa says, I even bought an extra pair just in case. <laughs> Jesus, there's a lot. That is commitment. <laughs> oh, Suzanne, I can see you. It's working. I can see you. Yay. Okay, so that was that one. And also from the Hey Hello, check out this floral with like this mustardy yellow in the background. That is fun. And oh, so pretty. So, so pretty. Uh, let's have a look. These is this is from the this is family so i've got a couple of different jen hadfield collections and if you don't get her stuff oh my gosh and if you want to follow like the most heartwarming person on instagram it might be her so sweet she is just such a sweetheart um yeah jen hadfield uh picnic uh, let's ad let the adventure begin as a bicycle on there. That one might have to wait. Let's talk about it with tacos, right? So cute. Um, and little journaling cards and stuff, which are so nice when you need to add that little bit of journaling to your scrapbook page. And then the back, it's kind of like a story with like little, um, sections picked out. So it's a family bake-off. Our favorite family tradition is when grandpa takes us for ice cream. That is the best. Like it's got like kind of all of these little sayings, but then it highlights different things. Like we love each other, cookies, family traditions, remember together, baking cookies, our favorite. Um, <laughs> forgiveness is highlighted on the one. So I think that's just really fun. I love the mustard with yellow flowers, says Kim. And the floral is so pretty. Um, okay, and Jen Hadfield, Jen Hadfield. I got, is this one? Oh no, that one's different. And that one, okay, did I find them all? Maybe, okay. So this is from the Hey Hello collection, the cute little flowers. And I have to say, I'm looking at this other page. <gasps> I just love that kind of paper, like a grid paper. Mm, love that so much. And then we've got a uh, little pink flower and well, I guess the flowers are technically white and the background is pink, <laughs> but, and then we have this cool, like crazy geometric graphic on the back, a little bit of that. Oh, so nice. And then we've got, um, this from the Hey Hello, like look at these strips with all these cute little guys, or you could keep them as one page, obviously, or you could cut them into strips. You could have them like all the separate little things and look at this wild print on the background that is so cute um okay also we've got from the this is family so there are words like game night and let's uh it says let's go make memories bedtime stories uh together we make a family uh give a little of your time have fun good times, relaxed time, let's celebrate, hooray, lots of really fun things, and then a geometric with green on the back of that. Uh, Heather says, I just found some paper with Latin on it, and I know, <laughs> I, I know why I would be excited, love me some Latin, <laughs> that is so fun, though. Um, Elizabeth says, good morning. It's my shelter in place birthday. Hoping to scrapbook today. Please scrapbook with me. I'm just showing off all my cool things that I got in my kit from the wild hair kits, but hopefully you're going to pull out your stuff and happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Elizabeth. Happy birthday to you. Okay. So I'm not going to be starting the choirs anytime soon. Let's just say. <laughs> Um, but okay, we're going to celebrate by having super f lots of fun today. 
Uh, this is from Amy Tangerine's Picnic in the Park. I have to say this little floral is like really um, adorable and I'm loving on it. And check out these fabulous lemon yellow stripes. So that's from her picnic, Amy Tangerine's Picnic in the Park collection. Then we have this paper, uh, a little simple B-side paper from One Canoe to Willow collection. <gasps> Look how pretty, look how pretty she says. Thanks everyone, and for the song. Look how pretty that is, oh my gosh. It is just gorgeous. It looks like little floor tiles and stuff. Oh, it's called Simple Pleasures from the Willow Collection One Canoe Two. This one is so fun because if you're really into the die cuts and you don't actually have like electronic die cut machine, look at what this paper has. They're like built into the paper. <laughs> That is so fun. This is from the Simple Stories So Happy Together collection. So like they're perfectly added. And a total trick that I would do is I would probably trim like with my little um, craft blade, scalpel looking knife thing, um, and trim a little bit of this and then tuck something just in behind it a little bit to kind of give you that look like everything's like layering. Oh my gosh, I love that. Oh, look at this word. Okay, so I've got a die cut here. It says magic. I could use that. And finally, last sheet of paper. Fabulous polka dot from Jen Hadfield. Hey, hello. And you have to see the other side. So cute. Lots of little hedgehogs. So funny thing is, like I recently did a page with hedgehogs on it because um, my, my, uh, nephew actually has a hedgehog. So let's move that out of the way and we're going to pull out pictures. So these are pretty fun and I'm going to take advantage of some of those words that had like home and games and fun and all of that kind of stuff because here is what I printed for today. Oh my gosh. My nephew... The hedgehogs are too cute. I know, so adorable. Um, my nephew and I discovered the joy of um, Messenger for kids. He has Messenger for kids. And we were playing with the different, um, like, filters, like the little face filters and stuff like that. And he picked some of the craziest ones. We actually both have different ones. I've never used like the, with a kid before, like they have this Facebook messenger for kids. So it's controlled through his mom or whatever. And, you know, he can only talk to certain people with it, but, um, really funny. So, <laughs> you know, you can see me up in the corner of all the ones. So I was trying different filters too, and he was doing different filters and they had crazy effects and it was just, it was funny, right? He's 10. Oh my gosh. Just turned 10, which is crazy. But yeah. Um, actually his birthday party was my last public thing that we did where we hung out with people. And even then, like we had it outside, around a fire and people were skating and tobogganing. So it was still a little distant, but yeah. Okay. So those are my fun pictures. They're the quality of them because they're like screen captures of this Facebook messaging thing. The quality is horrible. And so when I looked at them on my computer, I was actually like really disappointed. So here's just a tip print them small. You'll notice I got six of them on this four by six sheet skating tobogganing, not, not vomiting. No, that would be horrible. Skating and tobogganing, sledding, like down a, um, snowy hill. <laughs> she says, oh, that is like the funniest thing. Uh, it's funny what our brains, like, you know, when you don't hear the whole thing, what your brain is willing to like, kind of fill that gap with. <laughs> she says, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, I'm going to pull out some of the things to go with this, but yeah, printing them small really saved the day because larger, they were just a mess. Like, like seriously, you couldn't even do like a two by three kind of picture with these. Like they were just really poor quality, but 
that didn't mean that I shouldn't include them, right? Like, I think that being able to include them makes it so much better. Okay. Um, this is pretty, but it's almost too pretty for that. You need something that's a little bit wild and hilarious. I think because we're using all of those um, different filters and stuff, in one he literally has a cat face, this is the perfect time for me to like use something like this, right? Like that, all of the little icons and characters. That's super fun where I look at paper like this and I'm like, what use that right like that might not be the kind of thing I'm naturally drawn to for my scrapbooking pages for this like the one he's dressed like a teddy bear how cute is that like that's so perfect I'll be sad to give up this side of the paper but yeah the icon paper so good so I think I have to take advantage of that while I can right uh, Marty says printing small is a great tip. I have some pictures on my phone that are disappointing. Yeah, and sometimes they're just bad. I am of the feeling that just because it's a bad photo, if it's recording an important moment or something that makes you happy, don't worry about the quality of the photo. That is not the most important thing. It's more of having the chance to you know, capture that moment, tell that story, you know, that little tiny remembrance when you have a small picture is going to be better than no picture, probably, right? Like, so, so hopefully that's good. Um, Kim says, if you're from the South, a toboggan is a piece of clothing. Like, oh, like the woolen cap that you wear on your hat, on your head. Seriously, I know. <laughs> Sure, rest me up when a friend talked about making a toboggan for her grandson. I know, like, that is so funny. The first time I heard that, I'm like, <laughs> what are you doing with your toboggan? <laughs> they did not go on your head. <laughs> okay, so let's pick a few of these papers that are going to be fun to layer. Um, that might be fun. I think the florals, ooh, got a little bit of that. Ooh, this is another hard paper. I don't, you kind of hate it when they do this. So pretty, so pretty. Like, what do you do with papers like that? Um, okay, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my, I can send out like lots of thank you things. And the back was all those thank you words. Um, um, I think this, is perfect for another thing. So, what have I narrowed it down to? Oh, I feel like I don't know if the colors are gonna go. They're too bright, but I like the little florals. And this, I need something that kind of calms it down. Because when you use lots of the stuff, <laughs> Diane says they should always send you two of each page. <laughs> When I'm in a store and I see a page that's like that, I do. I buy it for both sides. So sometimes I'm like, oh, I'll take this. And then afterwards it's like, oh, well, thank goodness. <laughs> thank goodness. Um, yeah, so the icon paper, maybe that will be my background. And then I'll do some more calming layers. We'll see. This is definitely about fun. I like that. Ooh, and I like this. This, oh, both sides of that should be pretty good, I think. So, oh, perfect. Okay, I think I'm gonna use a little bit of all of those. Cool. Let's bring these embellishments back out. So I've got, I think, four papers that I'm going to work with right now, and um, we can start by putting this one as my background paper I think so I think that'll be fun and let's cut my brown strip off okay so Andrew says I'm here I'm late but I'm here <laughs> well welcome better late than never and if you get to join us in having fun that's great. Doing laundry, always laundry. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
I have done more laundry lately than, um, than I have. Maybe I'm just irresponsible most of the time, or maybe I'm more responsible right now. It's somewhere in the middle of that, I think. But, oh, and dishes, I know. It's like, how many dishes do we need to go through in this house? <laughs> How many? Apparently a lot. <laughs> Andrew says I've been doing jackets and towels a lot more often. Yeah, and um, I've, I've told my husband that when he comes into the house, he has to go and shower and change his clothes, like put those clothes in the laundry. I'm just like, I've reached that level of paranoia. It's real. Oh, did anybody see my cute Star Wars shirt? I think it's so adorable. And um, Cause you know, he goes out for work and stuff and you know, I, I'm here sheltering at home, but it's no good if he's bringing it all home and hopefully he's like doing all the right things. I think he's fairly good, not good with hand sanitizer, but, um, he's doing all the things. So, you know, it's good, but if he's bringing it into the house, if it's on his clothes or something, well, that's something we can prevent passing around. Give it time to, uh, to dis disappear, dissipate, do the things, right? So I've uh, been doing more laundry. <laughs> it's adding up. And then sometimes he goes and he kind of sits on the bed and I'm always like, oh, did you have to do that with your clothes on? <laughs> All the things, right? But extra laundry, extra dishes, you know, it's not like I'm going anywhere else. I can, I have time to actually do the things, right? Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this all together. I'm going to just trim a little bit off the top and bottom maybe. But I think I'll just leave it all together because I don't think that's going to be a problem. Yeah. Anybody else finding themselves doing... um something that kind of surprises you <laughs> lately <laughs> more more laundry more dishes uh diane says my 16 year old works in a big grocery store i'm always worried about that yeah and like even if they're not catching it but they're just carrying it right like you know that's something that we can shut down as much as possible in our house i think um uh, says i used to make my hubby come through the garage and leave the clothes out there when he worked at the cannery, especially during tomato season. <laughs> oh yeah, my dad has stories. He worked at um, the ketchup factory when, when, for a while when he was younger. And like he said, for years I didn't eat ketchup. <laughs> he eats ketchup now, but for years he didn't eat ketchup <laughs> because of it. Okay, so I'm just going to show you why layers are so important. Look at this. It gets lost on the, the fun background, right? We want to have that fun background, but like the pictures are fun. They're busy. So we need to create that layers of separation. So for anybody's like, all these layers, why are we doing all these layers? That's why we want to separate it so that our story kind of pops out and really, you know, takes the focus. Uh, uh, uh. Ooh, that's cute. So let's get this. Trimmed up. Uh, Marsha says more cooking. <laughs> Heather says, I'm shocked with the amount of dishes that pile up in a very short amount of time. So last night I came up here to do the Calvin ball rules and we'd eaten dinner late last night. Are you putting just one picture on your page? Well, technically I'm putting six pictures on my page, Diane. It is technically six. I could cut them up and they would be six pictures, but you know, plus there's pictures in the pictures because I'm in all the pictures. So technically it's kind of like 12 pictures that counts, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like putting 12 pictures on my page. It's totally cool. <laughs> it's like maximizing the space. <laughs> I, uh, 
<laughs> Kelly says, I live by myself and the dishes are unreal. <laughs> oh, I'm terrible. By myself, it's like one plate all day. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> it's only fun. <laughs> one cup forever? You betcha. <laughs> And Marnie says, another benefit of printing small. Yes. And printing at home, I tell you, for me, it's a game changer. I'd love to know, um, would you comment and tell me, do you print at home or do you order your prints? I'd love to know because that's, um, you know, it's a, it's a tough thing. Heather says, use the same coffee cup the next day. Why not? It might have germs on it, Heather. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Diane says both. Teresa says from home. Uh, and Jacqueline says from home. Vicki says mostly at home. Uh, Lauren says I print large quantities at CVS, but I, if I need one or two, I print at home. Brielle says I bulk order from Persnickety and then print any picture I want a different size at home. And ooh, I love that everybody has like little uh, systems. Uh, Christine says she orders them because she hasn't found a good enough printer to print at home. So this picture is like no um, representation of the quality of what my printer can do, but I'm quite happy with this one. Um, Heather's does both. And Megan says she mostly orders from Costco. Andrea says, normally I go to Walmart one hour because I'm always there for work, sometimes from Shutterfly. Hannah says, hello. Um, Kate's been printing at home lately. Marcia says she loves persnickety prints, but I also print mostly at home. I'm not as happy with the quality, but the convenience can't be beat. Oh, I know. <laughs> Marty says, both from my phone, mostly at home camera, and I order them. And oh my gosh, I, I can't remember fit for mom. Uh, you're going to have to remind me because your name came up like that again. Was it um, Chelsea maybe? Uh, I try to send out, but if I need different size, I do it at home. Diane says both. Diane says, what kind of printer do you have? And Mary says, I order from Costco. Robin orders her prints. Diane prints from home. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember it. I was, I'm like, I, I know who it was. I, I do. Um, Andrea says, I have a fairly new printer that prints okay, but I haven't found a paper that I'd like. Jeannie says, I print at home and persnickety prints. Danielle, I order them, but I do not have a home printer yet. Sonia prints mostly at home. She has a Canon Pixma, a selfie, and an HP Sprocket. Options, baby. <laughs> And Nadine says she orders from Costco. You have a Costco right there, I know. So that's like, oh, if I had a Costco, I probably would print more at Costco. But for me, it's two hours Costco. And um, do they do they open their like print lab back up online? Like, because for a while they all the places went super weird, and then they were like, no, you can't order online, and you can't do this, and it was like super strange and I'm like what is happening and I kind of don't think I've printed anything since then actually and says I want to try persnickety I hear good things about their prints all the time so Sharon says I print all my photos at home um I bought myself a printer it was expensive expensive printer not like crazy expensive it's not a 12 inch printer although I've kind of always wanted one of those um it's an Epson Eco Tank printer, an Eco Tank 2750 is what I have. They're kind of industrial looking and they're huge. It's like big. <laughs> and this printer actually um, isn't necessarily a photo printer. Like it does photos and it does four by sixes, but they don't sell it like that. They don't say, oh, this is the photo printer you've been waiting for. Um, but the eco tank thing is a game changer. Oh my gosh. My last printer was cheap. It was a photo printer, but it was, it was cheap, which was fine. Like great. Like you pay a hundred bucks for a printer or less nowadays. It's amazing how cheap printers are, but they catch you in the ink all the time. And oh my goodness, like the the ink, a fortune. I was paying $80 every time I needed ink. And that was just like, I, I, I know I had spent over $800 on ink for, for that printer. It's ridiculous. Sarah says both, but I've never heard of persnickety. I'll have to check it out. Oh, 
people let, like they rave about it they're the quality of the prints so that's a thing um marge says you can at costco you can order online and they'll mail them to you okay so yeah they got all weird for a while and obviously they got over it um hannah says i love persnickety prints i do mostly digital layouts and their printing is awesome Heather says, I'm negotiating for a 12 by 12 printer for Christmas. Oh, she's already on it. Girls, that's the first person that has mentioned next Christmas already. And it is March. Just saying. She's planning ahead. <laughs> uh, Kate says, I have the Ecotank 3750. I haven't tried printing photos on it. I'm glad you like your photo prints. So I will tell you, this printer was a nightmare to set up. The first time I printed, I'm like, oh my God, this is crap. <laughs> like, it was just garbage. <laughs> it was so bad. Um, the quality was terrible, but I had to go into the computery settings and I probably printed 15 to 20 test prints. But once we got the test print colors to where I wanted, I had to like change the values of different things once I got that done, no looking back. <laughs> like it has just been the best. And yeah, like now I went from having the cost of my ink being the that expensive part about printing at home to the cost of the photo paper being the most expensive part of printing at home. And it's really not that expensive, let's be real. <laughs> like uh the paper. So yeah. Um Diane says, I have a 12 by 12 capable printer. Yes, thank. It's so expensive. And yeah, and like you have to use them often enough. And mm, if I if I finally ever become a digital scrapbooker, like, you know, I kind of have mm -hmm. like this like wish to dive into that world and I fiddle for a little bit and then I come back <laughs> to my paper stuff. <laughs> yeah. And they're fast. Yeah. For persnickety. Yeah. Super good. Uh, Hannah says, Heather gets a prize <laughs> for planning our Christmas already. Kate says, thanks for the tips. I just bought new ink and I'm estimating it'll be about $60 a year for ink. Uh, it is like crazy. I am literally on my first ones that I've used and I'm still, I think it shows like five little dashes. I'm still over two out of the five dashes. <laughs> it's crazy. Heather says, you can see her desk. What? There's a desk? I'm like, does she have her camera on? I want to see this. <laughs> oh, look at that. See, I have the camera right here, but today it is not talking to the stuff that it needs to talk to. So, yeah. Yeah, but it's worth doing the setup of the stuff, and then the prints are great. You just here. I hadn't seen you in here. <laughs> and Hannah says, I have a Canon Pixma, and it eats ink. Oh. I know. We, Kate says we used about half of the ink in the past eight months and we're doing a lot of color printing. Yeah. I know. I print all my scrapbook pa like um, photos. I print, I don't do like tons of other printing on this printer. We have a laser printer in the house. So anything that could be black and white, I just throw it at the laser printer. But man, like it, um, yeah, it's been great. Heather says she stole the webcam from the boy. So that's cool. Yeah, I I totally got this webcam so it would work, but today it's today it's not. Okay, so I'm doing lots of chatting, which is fantastic, but not a lot of scrapbooking, which is less than fantastic. So I'll keep an eye on the time and maybe at around 11ish if we'll see, 11 11:15, we'll do our draw. So don't let me forget. Not that I will. So that's super fun. I love giving away free stuff. And we'll do a draw for a free kit from Wild Hair Kits. The great thing is you actually get to customize it for yourself. So it's not like my selections, it's your selections. Um, Deidre's making cards. So her and her son, oh my gosh, they are making cards for um, a convalescent home. Is that right? Or long-term care you can turn your camera on, or you can turn your audio on or whatever and just tell us about what you're doing i think it's just like the sweetest thing ever so um um hi alice hey, perfect <laughs> so uh, my 
son and I, you can hear the laundry going in the background. <laughs> We're doing laundry too. Um, my son and I um, decided we needed to use up some of my supplies. And I'm actually almost, I'm, I'm getting low on white uh, eight by, or eight and a half by 11 paper. It's quite interesting. I never thought I'd say that. But um, anyway, we're making um, cards for the um, rest homes and the assisted living homes here in town. Um, nobody can go in and out of them. So it's just a fun little thing. We got some sent out this morning and we have a goal and we've reached out to people in the community and some people have sent us cards too, just uh, to uh, give out. So yeah, it's just kind of something fun to do, something for the kids to do, because we haven't had school for two weeks. And I think we're starting on e-learning um, in another week and a half. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm having fun. I'm using like these little butterflies that I've always had that I never put on cards. I'm just making the fronts and then I put them on cards. Um, that's cool so, yeah what i'm doing got my distress inks out i haven't used those for a long time so <laughs> it's good to go back and play with some of the supplies and you're like oh i forgot how much i love this <laughs> i know it's amazing the difference just a little pink around the edge makes you know so <laughs> anyway Lawrence, that's so awesome thank you for doing that and yeah i think it's just amazing when we um you know when we look, there's a lot of people doing a lot of good things. And I think that um, it's so easy to get bogged down in the news because there's a lot, it's important, right? Like it is important, but we also know the right things that we need to do now. And so not a lot of that affects us personally on a lot of levels. And so now we're just looking at the ways that people are coming together to do good things, like looking at the kindness and the goodness of people. And I think that that's going to be like, kind of like our greatest takeaway out of all of this is how good people can be. So that's kind of what I'm feeling at this time, but um, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna chop up some of this paper to another layer in here. Um, Marcia says, what a great idea. It just made me think of my aunt who is in an assisted living place and not allowed to leave her room. She doesn't mind being alone normally, but I'm sure a card would be welcome. And Alex says, great idea. It will mean so much. Thanks for doing this. Uh, Jacqueline says, oh, back to the printers for a second. Ja Jacqueline bought the floor model of the Canon Pixma Pro 100 wide format. Ooh sounds really good it can print up to 13 by 19 but the ink is really expensive <laughs> yeah. diane says a nice lady paid for my groceries last week along with the person behind me and gave the cashier and bagger 50 dollars gift certificates oh my goodness you know it's you know when we're looking the love is there right the people are doing good things and like there's goodness. So we just keep having to find the goodness and focusing on, on those kind of things, I guess. Um, okay, I don't need this to be completely, ooh, I think that's what I'll do is I'll cut this. <laughs> okay, I just found the cutest thing on here. It says, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it's like everywhere I look right now, the Beatles are everywhere. I even found a Beatles coronavirus meme the other day. <laughs> it was like, um, wash your hands. Or <laughs> what, what was, okay, I, I, I screen captured it. I'll, I'll share it. Because our next low challenge, the one that starts in May, is based on the Beatles. And so, you know, how it is when you've got something in your mind. There's a word for that, actually. And you just see it everywhere. I gotta wash my hands. I gotta wash my hands. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, that's too cute. <laughs> um, Heather says, my trainer's still working with me while we're both at home. I'm so going to send her some good stuff when this is done. And Allie said, our greatest takeaway. What a great expression and something to strive for. 
Uh, uh, Kelly said I sent three this morning, spreading a little cheer. Christine, um, would you like to chat with us for a second? Are you on cam at all? Let me see. I didn't actually see. Oh, she might be taking a little break right there. Maybe she's, uh, she's post office service and, uh, you know, just wondering if she's like feeling overwhelmed or where that kind of sits for the, for them right now. And if there's stuff that is like, you guys are doing such nice things and it's like overwhelming our system or, you know, I just thought maybe that was something, maybe when she's back, we'll, we'll get her to chat with us about that. Um, Heather says, my trainer is still working with me. Oh no, she's, I said that already. She's going to send her some stuff. Lauren says, I'm new to the group. Can you please tell me more about load? Is it free to join? So, um, if you're in the scrap happy group, which is our membership group for, um, scrapbookers at scraphappy.org, then all of our load challenges are included for members. So that's not something you have to sign up separately. However, we do open registration for the load challenges in February and in May for people from outside to come and join us on them. And uh, yeah, so we'll be having, um, yeah, the registration will open in sometime in mid April ish. And I'm really excited about it. But um, so load is the layout a day challenge. We scrapbook every day for a month and we always have a theme. So the one for May is going to be based on the Beatles. And so every day we're going to be looking at something about the Beatles or Beatles mania or their songs and diving really deep into those different things. And then what we do is um, we have a daily story prompt and a daily technique prompt. So something that will spike a story for you to tell on your scrapbook page or something that, you know, will be a fun technique for you to try on your scrapbook page. And the goal of load is always to scrapbook a, a layout a day. So it's not that you have to actually use the prompts, like they're there as a bonus kind of thing, but you don't have to use them. The goal is to make a layout a day. We share our pages in our gallery on the Scrap Happy site. That was new this year. I was so excited to bring that on board. And then we actually, um, we have some prizes. And at the end of the month, we have a grand prize draw. And every single person that finishes the thing gets a little something, usually in the mail. And it's like a little pat on the back, a little finisher's prize. I'm talking like little, like sometimes it's like a die cut or something like that. It's just something small, but it's like that chance to say like, I did it. <laughs> so um, we do that for every single person that finishes the challenge. So yeah, that's um, a little bit about load. We'll have more information about that coming out. Everybody here is on the email list for this. So you will get information when registration has opened. And if you're in Scrap Happy, I'll give you instructions. It'll be like, hey guys, you already have access to everything. Like that's literally how easy our instructions are now. So I'm really excited about that. It used to be like, you have to go and join this thing. And at one time you had to sign up on special email lists and we've taken all the complicated stuff out. So that's been my goal is to make it super streamlined and super easy. Kim's asked, did you see yesterday about the world where the Beatles never were, but the hero can hear the music and the hijinks and see? I haven't. I saw that it exists and I definitely will watch it before I... I I'll definitely watch it before I get through all of the prompts. I've kind of have most of them kind of in progress right now, but because I know that it's there, I don't want to like leave it out. If you know what I mean, <laughs> that may get included as it was like a fun new concept. And I think that that would be uh, fun to include. And Marcia said, I saw this on, on TV this morning that there's a neighborhood in St. Paul where someone is leading an exercise class outside every day. They draw circles on the road six feet apart and the woman leads from her front yard, which is conveniently elevated. Bonus is that people tend to stay and visit at a safe distance when the session is over. Yeah, and like there's so many things that are, you know, we can do that... I need to spend more time outside. Although today it is totally snowing and I'm like, <laughs> I'm done with that. <laughs> Lauren said that yesterday is a great movie.
Okay. So I'm planning to put this kind of on my page, but I kind of cut the the stuff because I didn't need it to be 12 inches wide. So I kind of just cut some of the things out, which I think will make like little fun ends on here. And yeah, you can keep it. The snows. <laughs> you have you had enough? I think there's about three feet of like collected snow in the backyard right now because Oh, it's melted there. Oh yeah, it's not done melting. <laughs> like we have not had a warm enough for all the melting yet. I can't wait for that um, because yeah, it's been horrible. Um, oh, I don't want to lose this part that says "Let's stay home" and it's kind of in the middle. Hmm. What do I want? So yeah, it's uh, it's been interesting though. I I went out last week to try to go tobogganing down the hill. I almost got stuck <laughs> at one point when I came down the hill. I kind of my 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 shoulder kind of fell into the deep snow off of the sled, right? And then I'm laying there. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Because it's that deep that, you know, you can actually kind of get stuck in there at a funny angle. <laughs> so, and I come back in the house thinking, well, you know, at least I have my phone on me so I could call my husband if I needed to, probably. But, uh, yeah, I go in the house. He was napping. He was, like, not paying attention at all. I'm like, oh, yeah, rescue coming here. Not happening at all. Jeepers. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, let's play with this. Let's stay home. Memories, relaxing. Hmm. Um, Marsha said, you may have said earlier, but are your sons back at home? So my um, younger son is living here, but my older son is, has his own house in town. And so, um, he is like totally good about, um, not going out. He has, <laughs> he has gone to the level of counting all of his food. It's all on like lists. And he's like, mom, I have, oh, he sent some texts the other day saying, I don't know. He had so many thousands of calories of food in his house or something and like he's got like a list he knows the expiry dates of things I'm like okay maybe we have a problem in the in the other direction here <laughs> but yeah so he's home kind of and then my other but like he'll come over here so we're sheltering together kind of thing him at his house but him here he comes over but he heard my husband went to Costco the other day and he's like oh I'm not gonna see you guys for a little while then <laughs> I'm like okay that's that's fair <laughs> you know <laughs> well you know where to get food oh my husband took care of that let me tell you <laughs> I'm like hmm getting a little bit over uh uh, let's see we're, we're prepping honey we're not prepping for the end of the world <laughs> we're, we're being prepared no I don't know I'm like oh, when you see the people on the news that you think are crazy I'm like hmm <laughs> that was my husband not totally not totally I say that with like very tongue-in-cheek but at the same time like we have a lot of food here did he get toilet paper? He didn't actually. He he actually he said, "Do you need toilet paper?" And I'm like, "No, I always buy to toilet paper at Costco, so I'm stocked." <laughs> like, we live in the country though, so because we're two hours from a Costco, I keep more supplies on hand, I think, than a lot of people normally would. 
So I think that that's a little bit of a difference. And I understand why people would want to have more supplies on hand. <laughs> like, I get it. <laughs> uh, which one am I going to use for this? A little bit of this, I think. Ooh, I, I'm sad to lose out on those flowers. Yeah, this is just too cute. I am really just like fiddling around and playing with this, but it's fun. <laughs> so it's all good. Um, take that one and cut that off. Is there anything in here? Oh, that's all covered up. So let me. Uh... Yeah, I'll show you what I'm doing here in a little bit. I'm like cutting this thing. It's going to look insane at first, but then afterwards it's going to be amazing. <laughs> Preparing supplies. We are prepared. <laughs> um, Sonia says, my husband prepped early in February, and after having bought all the basics, he bought me a box of my favorite Chardonnay. <laughs> See, it's the important thing. <laughs> and, it, and it just shows how much he cares. <laughs> Okay, this is good. And there, this is kind of fun. Yeah, I'm liking it. Okay, I'm gonna have to actually stick this down before I move it around too much more. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Danielle says, I've been making masks for myself and my family. I live in Pennsylvania and they all live in New York. So I'm almost ready to mail them out to the individual households. Oh my goodness. The whole situation with masks. <sighs> yeah. Like not having enough of supplies that are essential and trying to reuse things it's that stuff is like very stressful like okay. let's put this on here And Marcia says, I've been amazed at the things that are out at the Sam's Club yesterday was all brands of pasta sauce, which I was trying to pick up for my daughter-in-law while I was there. Yeah. Um, and my husband has been, to, like when he went to Costco, they were doing distancing. So they were only letting so many people in the store, but he was there at a really good time. And like, definitely the crowds have um, dispersed. So like he was able to go in right away and then he was able to just, um, you know, get things that, that we needed. Okay. I've got the funniest story and <laughs> it's, uh, it's a disagreement on how things can work. So for years I had a master grocery list. <laughs> 
story time. I'll do the draw right after story time. So for years I had a master grocery list and so I'd print it out and it just listed all the things. And when I needed something, I just kind of checked it off and like get these things, right? So you just look at the check marks. That's the stuff you need to get. And, you know, <laughs> so when I went to a uh, digital version, like on the notes on my phone, I made my list and then I just check marked the things I need to get. So I don't have to look at everything. I just look for the check marks. And when I've got them, I uncheck them and they kind of like the non-check things don't matter, right? So it's kind of like a reverse checklist. I get it. It's like a reverse checklist. Well, my husband apparently thinks that that's really complicated and really hard to deal with. So we're sharing this note between our devices and I'm like, he's like, that's complicated. Why do you do it like that? Why don't you just check the things that you, like, you only check the things that you have. <laughs> I'm like, I sense this to run around my house and say, I have this, I have this, I have. No, that's <laughs> like silly. Like, oh my gosh. So he's in Costco and yeah, he saw that cheese was not check marked and because he's thinking oh that means we need cheese because cheese is on the list I'm like no cheese is only on so he did some of the stuff backwards and he got mixed up halfway through it and so he did some right and some backwards and so then he bought more cheese and he just bought cheese last time so we have plenty of cheese at my house let's just say like but like it's not that complicated I put letter like I, I wrote at the top only get the things with the check mark you can just go down and be like I only need that stuff. It's not a big deal. <laughs> so, yeah, we've had discussions about check marks. I don't know. Are there any like dumb little discussions in your life that are like, that shouldn't have been a thing, but it was. Because <laughs> that, that was a thing. Marcia says, oh no. Um, let, Kelly has a layout done. Woo! And Kim says, my husband went to Costco. They were doing the same thing, not letting everyone in. However, there was a huge line of folks waiting to get in and no one was doing the six foot thing. Kind of ironic. Yeah. Andrea said the same thing there. Yeah. For a while it was crazy. And now it's like died down, I guess. So hopefully that stays that way. Marcia says, you're right. Check what's needed. <laughs> like, it's not that complicated. <laughs> And like, you just kind of see those things and you'd be like, okay, I need that. And then what checked it? Like, it's like, okay, it's fine. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. It's so funny though, because he made that into like a big deal. Like, how dare I make a backwards checklist? <laughs> it's like kind of where he was going with that. And I'm like, uh, it's not that hard. Okay. So I think we should have a draw. Oh my gosh, we have 57 people here, which is amazing. Thank you so much for being here today, but it's time for a draw. I'm gonna bring up our participants list. I am, I am one of those 57 people, so it's actually out of 56, and I'm going to bring up a random number generator here. Random number generator, and make it out of 56 people, because you won't count me, and I'm gonna hit generate. Da, da, da. What does it say? 16? <laughs> I just had to make sure I read it right. So 16. And let me count down the list. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And we have Chelsea. Chelsea, fit for mom, Chelsea, you are our number 16. Congratulations. So congratulations to Chelsea. Uh, <laughs> Chelsea, I need you to email me, send me an email uh, to support at scraphappy.org, please. Uh, support at scraphappy.org. Oh, I sent it to the wrong person. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, let's see. It sent to here. There we go. And you got it. Perfect. 
Perfect. Send me that and you will get your prize. You get to pick your own kit. So that's super fun. You'll get to um, pick out your style profile. And from there, she creates this custom curated kit. So if there's anything special that you really like, you'd be like, oh, I really liked that Jen Hadfield paper. If you have any of that, you can send it. And it's kind of like hit and miss and you have you never quite know but that's like the fun part of it and um it reminds me of a little when I was a kid you'd go to the grocery or not the grocery store you'd go to the um convenience store like the gas station right or the convenience store in the corner and they had these little surprise bags and you know that the candy in the surprise bags isn't really that good but sometimes there'd be something in there that was like oh, that was a re really good thing and so you know, do you want the surprise bag or do you want to just buy the thing that you know? And like, I tend to be that person that just buys the thing that they know because I want that thing that's like that stuff. But sometimes when you get that surprise bag and it has those special little things in it, it's so good. So congratulations to Chelsea. I'm really excited that you get to try that right now. I do know that, um, ooh, one of the last emails that I saw they were having some specials on some of the the non curated kits so they had put some kits together with some stuff and so they they had some deals on that i don't know if they still do but anybody that wants you can kind of check that out on their site so yeah <laughs> Chelsea says yes I love getting her kids <laughs> so yay that's wonderful and like the great thing is it's not a commitment so you order a kit when you need a kit. So yeah, super fun. Congratulations to Chelsea. Okay, so, oh, I almost have things stuck down enough that I can show you what I got going on here. So I'm matting this, but I'm gonna cut around it. And because it has lines, that's gonna make it a lot easier for me. But I'm going to mat it with like a little thin line of this uh, grid paper around it. But I've taken this paper and I've kind of cut different words out. So I've got like different things happening. And then I wanted a couple of the things to like layer over the top. And like some of the stuff that was in the middle of this section here, I actually cut out because I wanted things like the word playtime and the word together time. And I'm gonna layer those kind of over top of this in some, some textury parts. And then I'll put this onto the icon paper and I'm getting there I'm getting there. It's super fun. Like I'm taking a thing that could be super easy and making it more complicated, but I love that part of it. So <laughs> what is something that you like to do when you are scrapbooking? Something that should be easy and then you get to the end and it's actually more complicated. Oh, is somebody taking I can hear somebody's sound. Let me, uh... Oh, Daphne. Let's have a look here. If we can find her. Make sure that her mute is on. Unless you're trying to talk, all good. <laughs> all is welcome. Okay. So... Yeah, so that's where I'm at. Congratulations to Chelsea. So I'm gonna just start cutting on this. And I'll, I'll say like cutting where things are cutting with scissors kind of gives me a little bit of like discomfort level. I don't know anybody else, do you have discomfort with cutting things just with your scissors because you don't get straight lines and because you know, um, you love your trimmer so much? <laughs> <laughs> Diane says, yes, I can never get a straight line. I know me and my trimmer have been best friends for so long. There would be times when I would cut this and do this, what I'm doing right now with my trimmer. I'll confess. Lauren says, I always use my trimmer. Ever. Heather says, I used to get teased with the number of alphas. Hold on a second. Uh, the alphas I used to cut before the dies. <laughs> Lauren says, I can't cut a straight line. Deborah says, I hate fussy cutting. I love my trimmer. Deborah, you will have noticed in the Calvin Ball Challenge, I was reluctant to add fussy cutting. And then we left it there for a while. And then I took that thing away. <laughs> I also hate fussy cutting. And I'm like, well. <laughs> 
Kim says, no scissors, I can't cut in a straight line or a circular line. So I figured with this, because it's really funky, I'm going to do like the whole scissors look, but it's going to look like I did it with scissors. Kind of like the on purposeness of it. And I think that's going to be okay. So while I have grid lines here, I'm going to kind of sort of use them. I'm not sure if I'm going to like that or not, but we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out. So I'm just going to cut this a little smaller first. And that's going to give me a nice straight line on that side of it, at least. So one part of it will be straight. <laughs> I think having some randomness and some straightness will be good for me. It's all part of it, right? Or I could just leave this all down. You know, I could just leave it like this. Let's see. How much am I covering up of the, too much, covering up too much of the fun stuff in the back. Um, Sharon says, I was born with scissors in my hands. Fussy cutting is my superpower. I can fussy cut. Like, I'm like, do do do, you know, I'm cutting around stuff. It's fine. I do not enjoy it. Um, the one year, okay, so I used to go to this um, scrapbooking event down in Calgary every year. It was called Camp Croppin. It was hosted uh, by Scrapbookers Paradise and um, Scrapbook A down in Calgary. Loved it. My friend and I, like, every single year we went we were the people that when they announced the sign up the registration was at like 6 p.m we were there at 6 p.m waiting to do our sign ups like it was amazing fussy cutting is with cutting with scissors yes um yeah but when they stopped doing those things it was so sad but anyways um at one of them every single class that we took, cause we, there'd be so many people in the crop room. It was almost hard to crop there. So we would go and just take classes, as many classes as we could, cause they were so fun. And they would have Bo Bunny and they would have Graphic 45 and they would just have like all these different companies teaching all these incredible things. And we just had the best time with it. So when we were there, the one year, every single class we went into they're like oh and we're just gonna fussy cut this and we're just gonna fussy cut that i'm like fussy cutting is the f word of the scrapbooking world <laughs> because i just i couldn't stand another class where we're like we're just gonna fussy cut this whole page of flowers or we're just gonna fussy cut. I'm like oh it's one thing when it's like a super easy thing to fussy cut around but i some things are not as easy, let's just say, like, <laughs> yeah, so good times. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, so definitely funny. Yeah, but when they stopped doing those events, oh, it broke my heart. But now we usually have our our um scrap happy reunions within the scrap happy family. Things are a little on the rocks this year, but we're seeing what we can figure out. <laughs> As you know, everything is changing right now. And we're going to adapt with the times. Okay, I need my pop stuff. Oh, I think I can do the next part. Yeah, um, so I've been scrapping along, finished my first page. So <laughs> I'm so excited. Now I can use an F for it. Does anybody have some show and tell? I don't want to forget because I think it's really fun to have show and tell. So if you would like to do show and tell, if you could do me a favor and hit your um, put, raise your hand button or whatever, and then I can see you and then it's easy for me to put you on the thing. 
So if you can do that, that really helps. If you can't find that button, I think sometimes it can be tough. Sharon says she's got her hand up. So let me uh, unmute and uh, spotlight your video. Okay. This is different. I'm using my iPad and it's kind of like way too close up. Um, <laughs> are you there? We're there. We can hear you. Uh, I'm working on, let me see if I can show you this page. I don't know if you can. I'm working on this. Um, can you see that? Uh, there. I think if you move your yes, hand. No, maybe. If you move your hand, I think I saw it in the background there. I don't even know where that camera is on this thing. <laughs> I never use it. Is, can there you see we go. That? Okay, so I'm trying to, you know, get every darn thing on the list on here. <laughs> it's a little border along the bottom. It's not glued yet, and I'm still looking for bits and pieces, but it's coming. She is and going I hard on the Calvin Ball points, guys. <laughs> Look at all the things on there. And it's so perfect all used together like that. Like, how adorable. Oh, my goodness. Like, and I know I'm adding all these things to the list, I'm like, oh, this is going to get crazy. But, like, the way you've brought all of them together, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting in there. There's probably quite a few still out, but I'm, I'm working on it. So, by the end of the day, hopefully. And you're definitely a fussy cutting master. Look at that. Like, you've got. I know. Dinosaurs. I don't know. Am I too like I can't see what you're seeing. Chamel's collection, you got avocados on there. I see a panda bear. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. The first one was that little duck that the dog is chasing. It was the tiniest thing I've ever had to cut out. <laughs> can you see it? I don't know if you can see I, it or not. I see your dinosaur right now. Okay, um, where do you need me to go? There's uh, a, a tent and a dog and a Okay. Panda. And right in front of the panda, there's a yellow duck. Oh, yes, yes. A little My tiny gosh, that was hard. That was the tiniest fussy <laughs> cut. I, I can't think maybe a quarter of an inch of that. Probably not even. <laughs> anyway. Deborah says, I'm so stealing this idea. And Kelly said, that's a darling border. Marty says, I love the border with all the items. Marcia says, it's so much, but it really works. <laughs> and and it's, it's fun. The, the song title was fun, too, because I think a lot of people don't even know that song. And I was trying to figure out what to do with the photos so that I could come up with a song. Which and song? I, thought, I don't see your title right now. All right, where is it? Are you there? I can't uh, see what I'm looking at. I mean, what, I'm holding this thing flat. You just might have to tell us. <laughs> where do you need me to go? All we see right now is your finger. <laughs> oh, I'm covering the camera. See? There is like a turnaround thing, so you should be able to see like what's actually on your camera. Can I press the button? I hate From a different it. angle? I swear. <laughs> yeah, you're looking at me. How do I do that now? Oh, well, forget it. You saw it. We <laughs> <I> did. <laughs> anyway, the song Everybody is... said, it's not a band-aid, and we can see your cute painted nails. <laughs> yeah, I'll... Um... That's yeah, perfect. Thank you yeah. so much, Sharon. There we anyway, go. It's See, it's fun. like it's super fun. easy to do this, guys. Like super easy. We've got people with their hands up. This is awesome. Okay, Kelly, I'm going to unmute you. And um, uh, let's see. Uh, spotlight your video. Okay, here we go. Let's see if I can pull it back. So I am working on my great nephew's first year book and I finished it yesterday, but I still have other layouts to do. So um, the cool part is these two arrows here. That's the end of a package for me. So yay. Yay. <laughs> um, and it's really cute because this is um, his daddy's pajamas. So I used um, some chipboard banners and banners are usually kryptonite for me. So <laughs> That, that was kind of fun too. And, and you got them out of your stash. Look at that. I know. No kidding. So yeah, so this one was really fun. And I've I've got another layout of him I'm working on. But I'm so it's so cool in my first week of um enforced vacation, I'm done with my big scrapbooking goal. So that's pretty cool. That's amazing. Yay! So, and having lots of fun in Calvin Ball. <laughs> <laughs> so that's thanks, awesome. guys. Thank you, Kelly. And I'll let you put your thing back on mute. Jacqueline has her hand up. So I'm going to go to her next. 
And if you can take your mute off, then I'll pop you up. Okay. okay. So I'm also card making. Oh. Um, my friend got me a kit from Crafters Companion that was full of stencils and stamp and paper. So this was one of the ones. I also wow. did a background, but I haven't done anything with it yet. It's glitter paste through a stencil. Ah. Dimmer. Very pretty. Oh my gosh. Dry. And then I'm almost done this one. So you get to see all the in progress ones too. So that's just uh -oh. sides in a stencil. That is beautiful. I like the little ombre effect that you have going on there. Yes, I think that was a um, oh Christina Warner technique I got from one of her videos, blending the distress oxides. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh my gosh, so that turned out good. Well, thank you for sharing. I'm going to uh, put your stuff here. I'm uh, finishing my cutting. <laughs> Cancel that and lower that. Chelsea has her hand up, so I'm gonna hit unmute, or you hit the unmute, so I will okay. hit the spotlight your video. Okay, don't mind yeah. me. I, I don't have any makeup or you know, shower that sort of thing on. Um, so I'm also working. That's been my whole week. <laughs> I know, right? Um, so I did a, a little paper grid with one photo. Um, it's kind of blurry on my end, hopefully. Anyways, so I thought that was kind of fun today. Yeah, that's super cute. Plus, you got your rainbows and butterflies. I know, I got flowers. rainbows and clouds and sun and a globe and cameras and birds and hearts and butterflies, all the things. Love it. Thank you so much. That's so fun. I love seeing everybody's stuff. This is great. <laughs> okay, if you can hit your mute button, I will. Uh, uh, let's see, lower your hand. Uh, let's see, I've got Suzanne with her hand up. So Suzanne, I'm gonna hit unmute and spotlight your video. Okay, I think I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I'm a little afraid now that I saw Sharon trying to share. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to figure it out. <laughs> it's not so scary. All right, backwards though, huh? Oh but, my gosh, I love the braces on the letters. <laughs> hey, my E fell off. What the heck? Must be in there somewhere. I just put the sleeve on, but the E fell off here, I see. Oh, <laughs> before and this after. This is not an original idea. I stole this off of Pinterest and just did my best to copy it. But um, this is about as fussy cutting as I get. I actually used the... Um, I used a punch and the some of the rubble that fell out of the bottom made those perfect little rectangles. Yeah. So I just gathered them up and used those and then put the strip over the top of it. But trying to stick those little tiny things. I don't know. Did I know it was tweezers. We talked about tweezers earlier. <laughs> that is as fussy as I'm gonna be in this book for sure. <laughs> that turned out so good and so cute. It really like, you know, like a page about your braces, like, you know, that adds a lot of fun to it. <laughs> now I got to find that. Oh, there's the E down in the bottom. Okay. That was all. All Thank good. You. Thank you so much. And let's see. Uh, and I have uh, Misty with her hand up. So I'm going to unmute you, Misty. And spotlight you i don't know if the unmuting worked yeah, yeah i think so works. yeah i hear you all right um i am working on a layout from our scrap happy sketch for march yay the first layout i've done in a couple of weeks i've <laughs> just taken some time to kind of process everything so it feels good to be here and share everything with you guys and so this is the layout that i've got going on this was from easter last year and my daughter wanted a basketball for Easter, so they're playing on the patio. And I'm getting all my Calvin ball points in there with stars and butterflies and arrows and multicolored title and flowers and circles. And so I'm just getting all the points on there. That's awesome. I love it. And the colors are perfect for Easter. They are. And they're making me happy because it's been so gray this past week. Oh, <laughs> it's like no more gray. <gasps> yes. Yes. Right. 
Well, and it helps when the sun's out, right? Like yeah. everything is more manageable when the weather is nice. Like yeah. I saw the <laughs> snow today and I'm like, no. <laughs> Yeah, this week's been great. <laughs> it's amazing how much that sunshine affects our our whole day. Sure. All right. Well, it's been good to share. Thank you. And I'll hit this and that if you can hit your mute. And then I have Diane with her hand up. So, Diane, I'm going to hit unmute here. I think I can hear you. So let's get your video put up. Okay. I am starting my daughter, my youngest daughter's baby book. Um, and I've never used the flip up pages yet. So this is the first time I've tried. So cool. I didn't do too well. I put them in upside down. Now I can't do anything about it at this point. Um, but anyway, I think they're going to work out good because that first year you generally have so many, um, baby pictures. So, so what kind of flips did you use for that, Diane? Those are, um... What did I use? Well, I've got Creative Memories, and I also have um, Snap Studio okay. for the inserts, and they're really they're really nice if you want to do flip page. Yeah, because some of them let well. you some of them Pardon? let you get back into them so that you can like pull things out or change things. Yeah, around. right. And if you want to just you can put a stack as many as you want. Yeah, they're stackable. So yeah. put as many pictures as you want. You could like start up here and go down a side. So and these like, are really nice and sturdy. I, I do and like I see them. that you've put them straight onto your layout, but like some people yep. stick them right on the outside of the page protector on the layout too, so that you can um, be flipping through your book and still flip through the little pieces too. So that mm -hmm. might be another thing to right. try. Yeah, it depends because sometimes you want that like straight on your layout and right. Right. But sometimes it's nice to have that interaction as you're flipping through the book. And another option that you can do is you can actually cut a hole in your page protector. Um, if you get, that's like, what I have to do. Yeah. If you get a cutting, um, pad, like one of the self healing mats, slip it mm -hmm. into your page protector so that you're not going to cut through both sides of the page. Right. Protector. And then you can, um, use like, I usually use like a metal, sided ruler like one that has like the little metal edge along it to okay. cut the page protector yeah, metal. <laughs> yeah. and so okay. one thing that like can happen is that you can get a little tearing on it so if you take like um like the blunt kind of end of a pen like a ballpoint mm -hmm. pen or something and kind of um i usually use like a little foam thing uh, here let me cancel your spotlight for a second and i'll just show you um, let's put me back up for a second. Um, so when I put my page protector in there, do I have a piece of plastic or something here? And then I just push down into the page protector and it makes like a little divot from that spot. And then if you, it kind of makes like an end point. If you kind of stop at that end point where that divot is, it kind of helps to kind of seal that little corner piece a little bit so okay. that you're not tearing past that point. Okay, that's a great idea. Thank you. Yeah, I, I've i done lots of playing with page protectors, <laughs> but that's like something that can kind of help because if you're cutting it, especially if it's something where there's interaction and that part kind of moves around once you've mm -hmm. got a hole in it a little bit, it can just help prevent that page projector from okay. tearing a bit. So. I'll definitely try that. Thank you. Yeah, not a problem. Okay. Does anybody else would like anybody else like to share? I uh, I don't have any other hands up, but maybe somebody was like, "It's so nice to see everyone. Great Saturday morning, cheering me up. Yay!" <laughs> That's what Brielle said. And Sarah said, remember, scrap lifting is not a crime. That's right. That's that's kind of like what we're it's all about, right? We love seeing everybody's layouts. They're awesome. And Allie recognizes some of the pattern papers that she's seen. It is so fun to kind of see what everybody has been creating. And like my page is not done yet, but it's at the point where I can hold something up finally. <laughs> and here we go. So I've got the background and you can see that I've got this all 
kind of attached to this one layer here and then I can move that around and you can see how like that little border that I've created with that um, grid kind of paper has really made this so it separates from the background and I really wanted that and with this po this black polka dot paper it like draws your eye right into that photo in the center of that page and Jane says, I'm checking out everyone's scrap spaces. <laughs> it's like the little secret thing that you get to see when you're on these, right? As you get to like, have a little peek at everybody's background. Like Diane has like beautiful colored walls in the background. Misty has like beautiful scrap room stuff that you can see. Yeah, she's got like all this stuff up on the walls. And yeah, it's super fun to kind of like get that little sneak peek into everybody's little spaces. So yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at working on this. And we've had our draw, which is wonderful. I do need to find a good way to add some journaling. And I know I had some journaling cards on one of the cut apart sheets that had lined paper. So let's see if I can find that. <laughs> or was it on the background of something that I've already used? Oh no, it's this one, okay. Oh, that's fun. There's like one here that says, let's bake. <laughs> it has all the little baking things, which I've actually been doing some. So things that are making me calm is, um, it's like reconnecting to the things, right? And so I wasn't scrapbooking, but I was card making and I was trying new things because it was ex exciting and inspiring and playing with my new toys, which was really fun. And so that was really good. Heather says, this is why you only see my desk. The floor, well, <laughs> well better has research product projects all over it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so baking um, and cooking, I've been going back. So if like you need like to find a little bit more peace and calm or something that feels really comforting, um, what I suggest is looking at family recipes. So I, the other day I made my mom's uh, cucumber salad recipe and I'd never actually made it before. So I kind of had to chat with my mom and visit YouTube because her instructions like were very incomplete, <laughs> but I was able to find like proper instructions on how to do her cucumber salad. And oh my goodness, like just having that, like it felt, yeah, it just felt so right. And so that would be something that I suggest the, if, you know, if things are feeling overwhelming, find a recipe or something that is, takes you back to your your childhood or your roots or makes you think of your grandmother or something like that and it just has like this immediate like <sighs> sense of peace and calmness <laughs> to it <laughs> so that was just a little tip something that's been working for me um, I pulled out my aunt's um, recipe for making banana muffins the other day and uh, so delicious the first batch did not even make it to day two my son ate six banana muffins the first like I looked and I'm like whoa what happened here because <laughs> I'd already had two and my husband wasn't even at home and I'm like so I took three of them and I put them aside I'm like those are for your dad <laughs> So, and Brielle said, FYI, the cinnamon rolls turned out, yay, I'm just now sitting down to scrapbook because it took a lot longer to make than I thought. Worth it though. Absolutely. Um, one of the greatest gifts that I've ever received uh, from one of my best friends from high school that we still, like, still super good friends, she gave me a handwritten recipe book with her best tried and true recipes in it and like she cooks all the time so she's the same age as me actually she's two months younger than me cooks all the time just knows how to do like home life like amazing she's like she just rocks it like laundry cooking baking canning like you name it she does it and I'm gonna tell you guys she has 10 kids <laughs> like, I know everybody's like what 10 kids. So she had five kids with her first husband and he passed away 
And then um, she actually met up with this guy. He had just lost his wife and they started talking and they were kind of just, they connected because they were both going through loss and then they ended up hitting it off. He's a super great guy. I'm like, I was so happy. And he had three kids. So that made eight. And since then they have brought two more, they have two more kids. And I'm like, Oh girl, I don't know how you're doing it. Cause her little guy right now is, I can see a little guy behind you, Sonia. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah, it was just, she's amazing. So she has 10 kids, but like, you go to her house and it's busy, right? Like there's a lot of people there. You got 12 people living in this house. It's busy, but it's so full of love. Kids are just pitch in and help out. And then she does like all of these things. Like she sews quilts and she makes scrapbooks for her kids. And she like always has amazing food, like literally the best recipes ever. So when I got this recipe book, it was like, gold. I like, it is the best. So I made pizza last night using her pizza dough recipe, which of course worked because all of her recipes actually work. And <laughs> it was so, so good. So yeah, there's just, you know, doing a little bit of those things to kind of connect you to the people in your life is very rewarding right now. Yeah, it was so nice of her to do that. It was a lot of work. Diane, um, people can't see your messages because it's just coming to me right now, but um, just let you know. Um, Danielle says, I'm greatly looking forward to experimenting with some new recipes and finishing a quilt with a quilt kit that my grandma got me many years ago. I don't know who our Danielle is. Is it is it Danielle or Danielle? Because um, I wasn't sure. So... And Marcia said, my sister did the same thing for me, a recipe book as a wedding present over 30 years ago. And I use it often. My oldest son has claimed it when I died. <laughs> I, it's so funny to kind of like, we laugh at those kind of things, but it's like, it's kind of so sweet. He knows the value of how good that is, right? <laughs> like, he's like, I need that. Yeah. And I shared on my Insta story about the banana muffins that I made the other day using my aunt's recipe. It's normal, Daniel. Okay. <laughs> um, I have another friend that uh, she, she pronounced it Daniel. And uh, yeah, he, he, he emphasized that he's not in a hurry to get it. Well, that's good. <laughs> but yeah, I, when I posted my aunt's recipe the other day, I tagged my cousins in it because I thought, you know, like we, we, we lost her mom a few years ago. And so losing my aunt was super sad, but you know, it's just that way of keeping her in my life. And my cousin says, Oh, well, my favorite one of her recipes is her chocolate zucchini bread. And I'm like, I don't have that recipe. <laughs> she says, it's the only way I eat zucchini. <laughs> so she posts, she shared the pictures of the recipe card with me. And it's written in her mom's writing. She has like the original recipe card. So you got to know there's a page coming up with that. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll be putting that into my scrapbook because that's one that uh, needs to be saved for sure in the book. Uh, then yes, I, met, I made my niece a recipe book for Christmas this past year with many family recipes and a few that I found and loved on Pinterest. Yeah, those kind of things are so great. Oh my gosh, Danielle was finishing a quilt from a quilt kit that my grandma got me many years ago. Yeah, so all of these things, like, you know, it's the goodness that's coming, right? We're, we're finding the goodness. Sharon said, I collect vintage paper dolls and recently bought a huge stash of books from a friend who's selling off her collection. I haven't even opened the humongous box because I've been busy with load and Calvin ball, but I plan to spend hours cutting them out soon. I will lose myself in my favorite childhood activity. Oh my gosh. I love paper dolls. All of my paper dolls, they had their whole storyline going on and families. <laughs> like... <laughs> Jane says, maybe an idea for a reunion is bring a dish and a recipe card. Oh my gosh, that'd be so good. 
Um, yes, we did, Teresa. We did the draw, and it was Chelsea that won today. So we were all really excited for Chelsea, and all just a little jealous all at the same time. <laughs> but yeah, it's super fun. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Okay, I should stick this down. That's what I should do. As I've moved things around and I've lost my tape runner. That doesn't happen to anybody, right? Nobody else loses their tape runners on their desk. It's the reason I actually have like so many of them is because I'm always having to grab one when I've lost one thing. Amy's got her hand up. Ooh, okay. Are you wanting to share, Amy? Yeah. Okay, here, let me put you up. Yay. So I've been um, doing this week on, on the YouTubes and Facebooks. Ricky Booten has been doing a bunch of mixed media. <laughs> she sure content. has. <laughs> um, on Sunday, she's going to do where she, like, binds it all together. Um, so I've been doing a lot of her, um, like, mixed media stuff. I've not necessarily loved how it's all turned out, but that's what she's been trying to, like, encourage us to do is practice and play because if you Those don't are do any, um if you don't ever do any of the uh practicing then you won't ever um know which techniques you like the look of and I am always hesitant to um put any of it on my uh scrapbook pages because I don't like how it looks and um uh I don't want to put it on my scrapbook pages because then I'll end up not liking the page. And then yesterday she was on scrapbook cards today page and she took dish soap and a straw and some paint and then you like would blow bubbles and then <laughs> like like put them on the page and it created like a effect on the page. And so I did that with a couple that made like some backgrounds that I can use now. So yeah, so it's just been really cool this week to do some more of my, like, I have all of her products and all of the stuff. But is that just her like, mixed media paper? Um, no, this is stuff, I made this using the technique she showed yeah, how to do it. But, like, the paper, is it, like, her oh, actual, yeah, yeah, like, the card stock stock kind of paper? Her, yeah, it's her um, foundations uh, cardstock because it needs to be a heavier cardstock. This didn't bow hardly at all, even after using a bunch of water and have a... Uh, uh, water and mixed media on it um so I do get her uh foundations paper but yeah. so if you're not gonna bind that like I'm just looking at that and I'm saying like some of those mixed media like the ones that you did the smaller ones because like those turned out gorgeous um mm -hmm. Vicky Booten she's a designer she designs with American Crafts and she, if you're not following her, she has a Facebook group. If you're not in her Facebook group yet, go and join it. Super fabulous. And she, yeah, she's totally about bringing mixed media to scrapbookers. And so if you're, if you're not going to bind those together, um, and if you're like finding that it doesn't feel perfect enough, like I'm looking at those and I'm like, those are gorgeous. They totally are gorgeous and like when you're holding up all those colors right and all the mixing mm -hmm. of the colors like I look at that as total opportunities to add like a dash of color to a page so I would say like to bring some of that and so you look at that and you say like maybe the colors didn't bleed the way you wanted or maybe they didn't blend the way you wanted or maybe they're you don't get the coverage that you wanted so some of the ones that are that feel less perfect maybe those are ones that you cut like a die cut out of or maybe they're ones that you you know stamp something on and and fussy cut that out right like the f word we're going to use it here but it would be perfect for something like that so you know and like putting like that green one the way that mm -hmm. that is designed it would be perfect for doing like a quote on top of that like that would be beautiful having that as the section like you cut a section of that and have it for your title for your page. So I think that what you have has a lot of opportunities for goodness, if even if you're not binding them. Cause like I can understand yeah. how sometimes they're not quite, they didn't turn out the way you wanted them yet. Like 
you know, playing is part of it. But I think that finding the little parts of what you played with and what you created, it's like, okay, I didn't fully get there yet, but I can use this in this other way. And I think that that kind of gives credit to the stuff that you've created, right? So definitely and it's just nice that like I'm actually using the stuff that I have instead of just letting it go bad especially with like mixed media stuff where it will harden it will dry out it will go bad if you don't use it and um and so yeah so it's been nice to actually you know get it out play with it and I did not feel like I'm just not good enough and yeah I've done somewhere like die cut out and then I used it over a series of pages for small things um to do like mini books out of it or to like um yeah, to like take something like this and then do more layers on top of it. Um, or yeah, to cut it out and I could use it as like the background for the front of a card and put some die cuts on top of it or a, um, a stamp or something like that. So like, yeah. That green one is so beautiful. Like I could just see that with like a quote on it and I'm just like, whoo. <laughs> so you might not see like, cause you're looking at you, it, it, we all do it. We find the imperfections in what we do instead of like, you know, when other people look at it, they're like, whoa, <laughs> right? Like, and, yeah. and like, there's like the stuff. And as you experiment, like you just kind of learn how to move the product better or which colors work better and how to get the right amount of liquid so that the things blend properly. And yeah. Like how beautiful is that? Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for sharing <laughs> the green one kind of looks like a jellyfish. It has like a little jellyfish feel in the way that the bottom half kind of flows like into like <laughs> that. The colors of the backgrounds are wonderful. Backgrounds for cards, journaling cards. Love the stars so much. <laughs> so yeah, lots of love for the stuff that you've been creating. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, do this um yeah this is so fun okay I see hands up D uh did we lose oh Deanna Dia and yeah, Deanna okay here let me uh spotlight you up here okay, I'm gonna see if I can make this work with I've been doing watercoloring I mean my scrapbook is stuff is right this morning I've been watercoloring so I'm going to see if I can show what I've been doing. Oh, oh my gosh. Because I have a reference picture right beside on my little phone. Uh -huh. and then, but I've been painting to go along with it. That is so fun. I had to turn it over. And I think that's how we, we oh, yeah, bring that. <laughs> Jonas just brought cinnamon buns. <laughs> oh, Brielle was talking all about her cinnamon buns, and it's like, I have smell a vision now. <laughs> Thank you so much. That is beautiful what you're working on, and that's exactly what I've done um, when I've played with watercolor. I've done exactly the same thing, is I've pulled up different images and then tried to do my best to kind of recreate the stuff. Danielle is asking, did you draw the flower yourself? I did. I started from a Pinterest image and I just, I, I freehand drew it. Although, um, no shame in tracing because it trains your hand to make the shapes that you want to learn to make. So tracing's great, but I didn't trace this one. I drew it and then I'm just adding color to it. Cool. Yeah. And I think that by actually like trying to emulate somebody else's stuff. Like I have made beautiful things. So I look at it and I'm like, well, wow, like it's not the original, let's be real. But like when I get some of the blending techniques or I achieve some of the, the fades and the bleeds and different things like that, it's, yeah. it just kind of gives you that like feeling like I'm getting it, like I'm figuring this out. So that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, thanks. Okay. I did see somebody that had their hand up for a moment and I'm a little, oh, Kim, thank you. I have to kind of scroll through and, and, and find. Okay. Um, can you take your mute off please, Kim? There. Yeah. Um, it's funny you're doing watercolor a minute ago. Uh, I, I was going to show you my, well, uh, 
my local shop, uh, uh, Scrapping in the City in Knoxville, uh, oh. is having little challenges every day. And yesterday was a uh, uh, with paint, so I did that. Oh my gosh, that is so good! And look, look at how good that is. Like you took all the little pieces and you just die cut them. No, I didn't. This is <laughs> it's so funny. What? I got it. It was a new die. And I thought it was going to be three hearts as mm -hmm. three. I thought that's so cute. So then I ran it up and there are three separate hearts. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I did nine hearts in a second month. But then today we're supposed to do something 3D. And my friend uh, who teaches the class, I go at once a month, she did this really cool Christmas thing. Uh -huh. And it's 3D because it goes like this. So I'm trying to make, and I would definitely welcome suggestions. Uh, I haven't got them fully done yet, but here's. Oh, so fun. This is the middle. Yeah. And there's the little thing there. And I've been making, I got a new butterfly cutout punch. So I've been doing those. Cool. But does that look good or what would you suggest? Hmm. I, I think it'll be good. Is there okay. like, are you going to pop them up on the thing so that they kind of have dimension maybe? That's a good, yes, that's what I can do. And one I thing like I would that. do is probably like um, fold the wings up a little bit just to oh. give them a little bit of like curliness to the edges of the wings. So cute. Well, I got the wing up. You can't see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Giving giving that. And like you can even bend the paper, like the edges of the wings, just to give them a little bit of like um distress kind of look to it. So um here, let's just cancel your spotlight for a second. I'll put myself up for a second. So yeah. when when I do it, like I just take and like bend so that the edges of the wings are actually like sticking up. Obviously this isn't a butterfly, but you can kind of see how you kind of get that effect. And then you can have like the butterfly wing itself. I could, yeah. So that the butterfly is really like kind of more dimensional and everything. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I did it. Well, I'll work on it. Like cool. right here. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think all of that stuff gives them a little bit of extra texture. Kelly says you can maybe ink the edges to stand out. And sometimes that works okay with um, the glitter. It depends on the ink that you have. Just careful with the glitter and the ink because some of them transfer a lot because they don't dry good on the glitter. So. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. That's a bit above my pay grade, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that three so pretty. part is know what I'm doing. Hmm? The 3D card is beautiful. Other people are jealous that you live near Scrap and in the city and that's your local store. They are my local. I mean, like, what, 15 minutes. They are lovely people, and I'm trying to spend money there with them to help them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I never want to lose my store. I'll come in and shop even when I haven't used stuff. That's why we got to be scrapbooking all the time, right? <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I think just like the little things that we can do, like really, you know, they give us like the extra fun. And when we play and we use our stuff, that's so good. And you got that new die and you're rocking it already. <laughs> I have made so much, many purchases at AC Moore. I'm so mad that they're closing, but there isn't much left after I got through. <laughs> 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 oh, it's so sad. It's it's always sad when we lose another one of yeah. our spots that we have to to shop and to find things and all the good stuff. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us, Kim. I'm going to you. cancel your spotlight. If you can put your mute on, that would be perfect. I see Nadine has her hand up, so I'm going to uh, give her the chance to come on camera spotlight. Oh, I didn't cancel your mute. I'll need you to do that. Perfect. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yay, this is so okay. great. <laughs> I just wanted to, sh I actually finished a layout this time, so I wanted to share. 
awesome. Oh my gosh. The Easter egg hunt with my grown boys, they get pretty competitive. <laughs> That's good. That's, that makes it more fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So do you have some like really tricky spots for hiding? Um, well, we've lived in the same house for a long time, so it's hard to come up with new tricky spots. Um, but they totally destroy the kitchen looking for things and then I make them clean it up after. Um, so we hide in the kitchen and the living room. We try to keep it till the main living space so that they don't tear apart the entire house. And so do you hide real eggs or candy eggs? Chocolate. Chocolate. Okay. <laughs> um, one of the best, my mom always hid real eggs or I mean the Easter bunny always hid real eggs when I was a kid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, um, one of the best spots that she hid the one year, cause like it always had to be sticking out a little bit. Like if it was like in a lot of places, right? Like you couldn't have it completely hidden. Right. Like it could be in a cupboard or something, but you know, not completely hidden, but uh, she had like those, uh, valance over the window, like the sewed valance kind of thing. And in the end of it, cause they're kind of like a pocket. She actually hid the oh, egg yeah. in the edge of the pocket. And so like you would never think, but it was like the, the trickiest spot that she ever hid an egg and I'll never forget. <laughs> That's awesome. Take memories for the kids, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you so much. I'm so glad you shared. That's super you. fun. It's so good to see friends. Like we grew up <laughs> together. So yeah, super fun. And we don't live like close, close anymore. So it's really fun to connect back through scrapbooking and all of this. It's so fun. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm looking and we have reached the top of our second hour. So usually this is about the time that we close things up. My page is not done done. I've had lots of fun talking and not a lot of, not been as productive as I could be. So I kind of am at this point and I'm popping things up with some tape and doing that and just kind of fiddling at this point. But I just wanted to say thank you to everyone that was here today. I really appreciate you spending time with me and if this is fun, I have decided to take on a fun new project for the month of April. So before you say bye, you're going to want to hear about this because this is going to be a fun new thing that I'm doing. Every weekday during the month of April, I am going to be going live probably on YouTube is what we're thinking right now. I still have a little bit of testing. It is going to be part of my happy at home series of live events on YouTube, I believe. <laughs> and we are going to be um, showcasing some different techniques, playing with different products, trying different tools and supplies. I'm going to ravage my scrapbook room and show you all the good things that I have here, covering different scrappy topics and ideas, chatting, sometimes doing a little bit of like on camera creation. They're not going to be long, long sessions but they're going to be consistent. So I'm going to be sharing the time and all the details once I've done my YouTube test to make sure that I can do the things the way I think I can do it on a YouTube live. I haven't played with them enough yet to be a hundred percent sure. Um, so I will have all of the details about that coming out really soon. I'll be sending that in your email. So thank you for being one of my email subscribers. And Sandy says, I can't figure out how to comment on live YouTube videos using my iPad. Does anyone know? I don't right now, but we will see if we can figure that out because you know, it's way better when we can have interactions. So, um, I will make sure, um, that we can figure out how to make that happen. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you so much for joining me for today. I to totally love doing these things and I really appreciate you taking the time and 
like sharing your stuff. That is super fun for me. Deidre says, I will help you test that, Alice. You may be seeing me pop into my YouTube. If you're not following me on YouTube yet, it is at youtube.com slash scrap happy. That is my YouTube channel is scrap happy. And yeah, we're going to go check that out. If it doesn't work on there, I may play with Facebook, the Facebook lives. I haven't seen the functionality to do some of the stuff that I'd like to be able to play with. So Kathy says, thanks, Alice. This makes us feel so connected. And I think ugh, that's totally the goal right now is connecting with people and sharing the fun of our craft and getting together and doing this stuff. I love it. So yeah. So watch for the happy at home series that will be starting April 1st. Yes. On April Fool's Day, but it's not a joke. It's going to be real. <laughs> so I hope you'll be able to join this. Marty says, thank you so much. I'm excited to get here and be able to participate with all of these amazing scrapbookers. <laughs> Check your Dropbox afterwards. Oh, okay, I will. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Have a fabulous day. And if you're in the Calvin Ball, you still have a couple days left. I don't have any really big twists coming anymore. We're kind of on our, okay, let's just get to that finish line. But <laughs> it should be a lot of fun. Bye. Bye, Kim. <laughs> okay, so talk to you all soon. Bye.